Welcome to the J.R. Hendrick Texan Night, the podcast that deals with the early life of J.R. Hendrick. And now, narrating return engagement to J.R. and Jimmy. a.m. Central. Jim and Betsy, Blake and Katie, wake up and start packing because they have to leave the hotel by four in the morning. They had to be at the airport by 4.40 a.m. in order to be there in time for the 5.10 A.M. departure back to Washington, D.C. Also, going on the plane with them is Claude and Becky. 3.15 A.M. Mm-hmm. Central. After reading the Bible together, Jim and Betsy finished packing their bags. They realized that Claude will only be with them for one day because he and Becky wanted to return to Dallas by Tuesday and to Midland by Wednesday. Two forty five AM Mountain Elizabeth wakes up with a stomach ache and reaches for her tonic and also some medications that the doctor in El Paso had put her on. There's a checklist that she must take before undergoing uh, radiation treatment this morning. She thinks about her marriage to her late husband, Jeremy. She thinks of a guy that she met in Midland who was going through uh, chemo, chemotherapy, around the same time that she was named Eli. In many ways, she would like to be with him because she felt lonely so much of the time with Jim and Betsy no longer in the West Texas area. (sighs) 4 a.m. Central. The Hendrick Party gets onto the limousine to drive to Baton Rouge International Airport. To check in with security. And then head out to the gate by 4.45 a.m. 4.50 a.m. The Hendrick party board the private jet that would take them from Baton Rouge back to Washington, D.C. And Jim is very happy that Claude and Becky are on board as well. 5.10 a.m. The charter jet taxis down the roadway and departs from Baton Rouge to Washington, D.C. Jim is not looking forward to returning to his work, but he knows he must begin his masterpiece soon. 5.30 a.m. Swimming in the swimming pool with the sibling. I bumped into Charlie Nation. No Jennifer Bowers, I see, Charlie said. What's she up to today? She has to appear in a court in, in court today in Houston. 
representing her daddy's company. Well, maybe she's getting uh, her action elsewhere today. Charity, sickly minds think crap like that. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of sick minds on campus. All you have to do is hop over to the school of mass communications. That's a clumsy way to talk, Brent Clark said. I've known your kind before, Charlie. Where the hell have you seen anyone like me? Brent asked. The brokerages in San Antonio, where my daddy used to make his deals, are filled with people like you. Whatever, Brent said. Uh, Brent, whatever, Brent and JR say in unison, swimming away. <coughs> 6.30 a.m. Cinnamon rolls are being served for breakfast. As JR sits down, where Black Glock and CB Coleman <sighs> Man, never mind, Charlie, CB said. That man has a sick mind. I should probably warn you, JR. Your brother Kyle is going up to D.C. to see your parents and register for a physical exam with the Coast Guard. <sighs> Certainly Daddy won't like that. But Mama sure will. He'll be, she'll be looking forward to it. Gerald says, Boy needs to be top manners. 8 a.m. Eastern. The plane arrives in Washington, D.C., and Jim and Betsy get into Jim's Chrysler and drive home. Suddenly, the phone rings. It's Christine. Say, Daddy? Did you hear? I was reheard that Kyle is coming tomorrow. Jim bristled. Jim bristled. Don't want to hear that, Christine. Don't want to hear that. Betsy, who could hear the conversation on speakerphone, sh shoots Jim an icy glare. Before moving to Washington, D.C., Betsy had packed up some of Kyle's childhood things to keep as mementos around the mansion. Whenever she started missing him, and she missed him now more than ever. 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, the mansion front lounge, uh, front lounge. Jim is holding a press conference where he welcomes and salutes uh, the Idaho gubernatorial candidate. As well as Utah Senator Orrin Hatch. 9.15 a.m. Eastern. Jim is meeting with Phil Bat from Idaho and Senator Orrin Hatch to discuss the beginnings of his foundation for faith-based initiatives to aid those who are small business owners. Nine oh five AM Central. In economics class, 
Dr. Gallworthy. made the following pronouncement. I should know Wednesday is the midterm exam. I want to continue from Friday's subject on tax cuts. Who can tell me who, de who developed the theory that tax cuts stimulate economic growth? Anyone? Mr. Hendrick? <coughs> yes, Carl Trailblazer, sir. Arthur Lashley, Jared said. <coughs> yes! I forgot. <coughs> A critical detail. The Laffer curb. This measures the relationship between... <coughs> tax rate and economic growth. This is a key factor here that I want to be on the test. And even though Mr. Hendrick can't see that well, he has mastered the thesis of this curve, Dr. Galworthy said. Class, are you writing this down? 935 925 a.m. Jennifer Bowers walks outside the courthouse in Houston where she bumps into her mother and the young gentleman. Jennifer, I would like for you to meet John Henry. Now his family is from Virginia and Maryland. <coughs> and they are well bred, far beyond uh, the Hendrick. Would you at least consider a lunch date with him? He's a blogger. Careful, he provides more for you. A lunch date? John said. Well, what do you say? All right. Meet me at the knoll at 12 this afternoon. Jennifer said half heartedly. 12 or 9 p.m. Uh, Central. I mean, 12 or 9 p.m. Eastern, rather. Jim delivers a keynote speech at a reception in reception for California Governor Pete Wilson, who is head in the polls. And even though Wilson is a Republican, Jim finds himself more in line now with the Republican platform. 12 p.m. Central. Jennifer Bowers and John Henry have lunch together. My family's worth $8 billion now. I'm aware your family is worth 20, 20 billion. But I'm independent of my parents. I'm a blogger who makes $40,000 a year. Honey, my boyfriend, J.R., gave me a $40,000 friendship ring. I'm staying at the Porter Oak Hotel. Let me guess. No penthouse or suite? What do you take me for? My boyfriend, J.R., he knows people. Big people. Big people. 12.35 p.m. Geraldine Nation 
invited me to have lunch with him at the clock house. Uh, chicken fingers. Some feminist in a wheelchair near us was talking about political correctness. And Bill Clinton's agenda. Charlie wanted to talk about something else besides politics. Something that irked me. You think Jennifer Bowers is seeing somebody else? Charlie, no way. Can't afford it. Bowers and I are getting very close. A friend, some, a friend of Daddy sent these pictures. This is Jennifer Bowers talking to some man outside of a restaurant. And there was a picture of them walking inside together. Certainly these are the workings of a sick man, Charlie. I don't come here to sit there and hear you talk about uh, games of embarrassment that way. Thanks for ruining JR's uh, composure, uh, Kevin McDonald said. Now we talk, can we talk politics for a change? 3 p.m. Eastern. At a star studied reception, at Constantine Bush's White Castle, <laughs> everyone is being greeted in the main lobby of the mansion and being brought to the dining room where brownies and cupcakes are being served in in the house. There was to be an announcement at that reception that Constantine Bush was withdrawing his report from the Republican candidate, George Hoover, because he got caught in a sex scandal, and would be supporting Libertarian candidate Bill Hume, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. It's a star-studied reception at White Castle. Where everyone is standing around mingling, <coughs> enjoying brownies and cupcake and, and cupcakes and drinking beer, Constantine announced at the reception, which on his report for the Repub support for the Republican candidate and supporting Bill Hume, three forty p.m. Central. <coughs> Fifteen minutes before Christine had called me to tell me that Kyle was coming to Washington, D.C. And to be honest with you, I could have cared less. So to get away from Charlie, I go to the Center for Public Affairs to attend the Society for Public Affairs meeting. Brownies and cupcakes are being served. As the thing brings in Carl Johnson, a public affairs consultant from uh, Alamogordo, New Mexico, He is consulting for the oil industry. 
7 p.m. Eastern. Jim and Betsy attend a high society dinner at White Castle. When Constantine Bush announces that he is supporting Bill Hume and that this would be a victory party. Seven forty five PM Central. Jr. had taco salad for dinner at the Holy Spirit Club. But now he is studying at the Center for Public Affairs. For tomorrow's Public Affairs in Old Testament Literature. Tomorrow morning, Dr. Harmon will be lecturing about research design. <clears throat> 9 p.m. Eastern. Back a little bit. <sighs> Back at the mansion, Jim and Claude are watching a 1980s gangster movie. Tomorrow, Claude will take the 5 a.m. private jet flight from Washington, D.C. with Becky to go to Dallas to see her parents. 9.05 p.m. Jared is in the living room at Gordon Hall. He had just been meeting for about an hour with uh with Kim Hesed, a young twenty year old missionary with the Assemblies of Christ. The sticking point was when JR told Ken he would not be baptized into that church. Turning off his CCTV portable, he goes into uh, he hops into bed to get some sleep. October 4th, 4.20 a.m. Eastern. Jim wakes up and goes straight downstairs by elevator to the basement to the workout. 5.45 a.m. Eastern. Jim goes into a room which is very seldom used unless used to, in preparation uh, of reception. But today it would be used as a welcoming place for a press conference ahead of New Mexico gubernatorial candidate Gary Johnson's arrival. Although he was born in the Midwest, he had a distant relative with the same name who went to school at Texas Tech with Betsy's brother Tom and they were also frat buddies. 6.05 a.m. At breakfast, Jim is furious when Betsy and Elizabeth Marie mention Kyle What's coming um, tomorrow? <laughs> Damn it! I need him at the ranch. Jim explodes. Exploding. Don't stall on me, Jim. He's coming to D.C. for a cause called Fiscal. And I want to see our grandson. Betsy fumed in tears. 
They're staying in the hotel. Paid for about a post, Coast Guard. Elizabeth Marie said. 628. 6, uh, 38 on Central. Donuts were what Jennifer Bowers and I were having for breakfast at Crockett House. When a man in his mid-forties, I recognized, approached me. Francis Bla Blackwell, I'm very pleased to see you. May I sit down, Hendrick? He and his dad's and wife, Fortune, sat down with us. I asked Jennifer if she minded saying while we conducted business. I whipped out my trust fund card and put in 18000 <coughs> for investment in Blackwell Investments. Last weekend, I heard from Mama that they were partnering with <coughs> the American Conservative Union, and I wanted to be a part, especially in public affairs, regarding the relationship of the American Conservative Union and Blackwell Investments. Fortune said that she married uh, Francis out of necessity because her business was going under and he was making it big in gold and silver and real estate. 8 a.m. Eastern. Jim's arrives at his home office and asks his private secretary to buzz him when the welcoming party was ready to greet future New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson. 12 p.m. Eastern. At the mansion courtyard, the welcoming ceremony for New Mexico gubernatorial candidate Gary Johnson is underway. All Fair New Mexico and the Star Spangled Banner is being is was played by a DJ. Jim talks about his oil business uh, in New Mexico, along with the ranching business in New Mexico in the early 1980s. Oh. Before he went into the music entertainment industry, Gary Johnson also gave a stirring message praising Jim Hendrick for his endorsement for being a fiscal conservative. but moderate on the other policies. <coughs> Exiting out from the courtyard, the main entrance of the courtyard, the party passes the northeast and southeast lounges, headed towards the green room. Which is a room which is used by the Hendrix to greet people, officials arriving. 12 p.m. Central, Dave Smith meets me out in front of the rec center. Hey, man, what's up? Let's go. J.R. said, getting into the car. Dave, it's always a pleasure. How are you? Dave asked. Just dandy. 
Lord, sometimes I worry about my parents. My brother's coming to see him this week. And I know that's going to cause huge problems between mama and daddy. See, it's Kyle or it's his daddy that's always a sort of a sort of subject between them. And I get tired of it. Look, you're a genius. Even they're able to create a life without them. Even you're willing to do that. And you'll be able to, you'll still continue with that, Dave said. <laughs> My ex-girlfriend, Rachel, asked me to come back to <clears throat> her date with McDonald's. I don't know. It's crazy. I can't believe I'm doing this. We just picked up a schedule together. <sighs> We're in West Hall. And right after that, she asked me out on a date. We're geniuses, Dave. We'll figure out a way to this. We went and ate at the fountain. Dave Smith, having brought some burgers, some hunger busters from Dairy Queen, we sat down and ate lunch. 1 p.m. Central. Dave and I decided to talk in the car. You know, I can't believe how busy I have been. It's University of Life, JR. And there's my parents. They have everything going for them. But they don't know how to comply right. Daddy looks for Bill Clinton and complains about it. And my mama goes to all the ladies' teas and has a good time. <sighs> Comply properly? This sounds strange coming from a son who should consider law school. Don't tip too sanctimonious. Only Dave. Two PM Eastern. Jim is conducting SBA business with New Mexico gubernatorial candidate Gary Johnson. Jim had been wanting to meet with him for six months now, and now it was his chance. 2 p.m. In Old Testament literature class, Lee Simon was lecturing about the literary works and life and times of King David. 4 p.m. Eastern. In Washington, D.C., Jim is meeting with his dream team to discuss upcoming work projects, particularly regarding his faith-based initiatives for small business. And having press releases released to the Wall Street Journal and the Dallas Times, 4.45 p.m. Eastern. Christine just got out of school when a car pulls up. Doty, get in. Kyle said. Christine laughs with glee, almost choking back tears. Kyle Dustin, how the hell are you? Screw it up, Kyle said. Let me call Mama, Christine said. 
take on the phone. Mama, someone wants to talk to you. Mama, it's me, Kyle said. Kyle. Betsy said, uh, choking that tears. Oh, Kyle. I'm in D.C. I have a physical going on. I want to see you. Oh, Lord, it is so good to hear your voice. <laughs> 7 p.m. It's a star-studded reception for Gary Johnson with junior hostess Amy Kathleen running the show. Priscilla, Priscilla Aguirre a top-notch country artist gives some singing for the dinner. 8 p.m. Eastern. Betsy slips aside from the reception and goes into the green room to talk to Kyle and Madison, which is a chance for her to see her uh, little grandson, Andrew. I know I gave you a different last name, Kyle, but you're still family to me. You still have your best artistic self. And you mean a lot to me, Betsy said. <sighs> Look. I have a cool cost card, uh, signal, physical, tomorrow. But then I'm going to get back to Fort Worth for, for a cattle auction. There must be some other reasons you wanted to see me. As soon as Andrew is a year old, Madison and I decided... We're going to try again for another child. <sighs> October fifth. 105 a.m. Eastern at the mansion front lounge. Jim has finished watching some program on CNN. But now he is in deep thought. He admires New Mexico gubernatorial candidate Gary Johnson, who he knows is leaving late tonight. Late tonight for Albuquerque. Jim is not interested in seeing Kyle at all. He is angry because he feels like Kyle should be working on the ranch. Not trying to court favor with the rest of the family. But he also realizes that this is making tension. Between him and Betsy. 5.15 a.m. Jim wakes up and heads by elevator downstairs to the home gym. 5.30 a.m. Central. Jerry is swimming with Stony Rosen. C.B. Coleman. And Charlie Nation. Charlie swims over to him. Did you know that your crazy brother is in D.C.? Charlie said. How the hell did you know that? My brother James, who was a year before me, he's going there for a physical with a Coast Guard. And your brother's there, too, visiting your parents. Sorry for your bad breaks. Your mama wants to see him. 
But your daddy is so heartless, he don't care. You go to hell, Charlie. 6.50 a.m. Uh, eggs, hard boiled, along with sausage, sausage was for breakfast of the Holy Spirit Club. When I sat down, Stone goes, he's a grizzly bear, Stone Rosen said. That was a terrible thing he said to you. Just gives me more motivation for my summer internship. I'm going to go lean on the dean sometime this week or next week. That way I can get it for sure. Don't let him do his best to ruin your day. He's a tell, he's a bellbird. <sighs> 9 15 a.m. Central. Jim is getting ready to meet with New Mexico gubernatorial candidate Gary Johnson and Christine. Rushes in to talk to him against her mother's wishes. Kyle's coming back this afternoon. You should do what you can. To Let him see you, Christine said. Jim whistled, bristled, and glared at his daughter. No, Christine. He went off from the ranch. I have no respect for him anymore. 9 a.m. Central. Economics test. I'm taking the economics test in West Hall, ready for it to be done. 1 p.m. Eastern. <coughs> Jim is giving a speech at a luncheon for the House Freedom Caucus, a caucus that was formed in 1990 and later discontinued in 1992, only to be revived again in 2016. This House Freedom Caucus was a group of conservatives and libertarians campaigning for liberty and and limited government. 1 p.m. Central. After mass meeting a theory class and a swim, Jeremy and Jennifer decided to have lunch together. This rich blogger wanted to try to get with me. Oh, well, what did you say? Jerry said, I said no. <laughs> Told him no, Jennifer said, hugging Jerry. Because I want you. 3 p.m. Eastern. In Betsy's tea lounge. At the mansion, Betsy, Kyle, and Christine have been talking. Christine was out of school for the day because of in-service. Also, it's Madison and little Andrew when Jim walks in with a cowboy hat. And he takes it off and tips it. I want to say hi to my son, Jim said. Please forgive me. I was mistaken to believe that you ran off from the ranch. I didn't know. That you had to report for a duty physical. But it's good to see you, son. My daughter, my firstborn grandson. 
Then Jim gets down on the ground with his nine-month-old baby grandson and begins uh, playing with him. Spiders punch them, Jim said excitedly. 3 p.m. Central. Easing over the couch, I answered the cell phone. To talk to my family. And it went like this. p.m. Eastern. In the Northeast Lounge of the mansion, the family gets together. Betty C. announces that she is going to let Christine fly back with Kyle tomorrow morning to attend a cattle auction in Fort Worth and then go with them back to the ranch. But she had to report Back to Washington, D.C. by Sunday the 9th at 11, 7 p.m. Intro, uh, Central, Eastern rather. Jim speaks at a crowded ballroom at the Sheraton Hotel in Washington, D.C. Fundraising dinner for the ministry Food for the Hungry. He is introduced by his assistant, Bill Mayer. And it's a moving time for all. 7.15 a.m. Uh, Central. Expectations were high as I had dinner with Brent Clark over, over at the Spirit Club. And then I went to the evening devotional where Bishop uh, Edwards one of the congregational leaders it 
was talking about the Christian liberty message of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, which is dependent upon the Spirit of the Lord. 8 p.m. Eastern. Jim and Betsy are watching the news in the front lounge of the mansion. To be the trial candidate from New Mexico, Gary Johnson was already on his way to the airport to go back to Albuquerque. We hope you enjoy and listen to this episode of Return Engagement. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and become a part of the adventure. This is the James A. Hendrick Empowerment Network saying until next time, get ready for the rest of the story. It is going to get a bit more interesting from here.